President Biden is hoping to highlight uh, the U.S. commitment to fighting climate change while he's in Scotland this week to attend a global conference focused on the issue. The president left Rome this morning after spending the weekend in Italy for the G20 summit. And there he met with other world leaders to take on, yes, climate change as well as other global issues. So let's go to Weijia Jiang. She is traveling with the president in Europe and is joining us this morning, this morning for us anyways, Weijia. Um, glad to see you. Listen, world leaders reached a major agreement on a global corporate tax. This was something that was very important to the president. We haven't talked a lot about it because we keep talking about climate change and other issues. But can you tell us, you know, what this corporate tax, what, it'll, what it will mean and how it will sort of impact us? Well, to be clear, even though world leaders agreed um, on this uh, global corporate tax, it's up to each country mm -hmm. to pass legislation to implement it. So even though they've signed on to the idea, um, that doesn't mean it just automatically is in place. For example, Congress will have to approve it in the U.S. There's already been some resistance from Republicans. But if it happens, it would mean that all major corporations, no matter where they are in the world, would have to pay a minimum of 15 percent of global tax. And that's important because what we see now um, is that if some companies have to pay higher taxes in one place. They'll just move to another one. And uh, the president has long argued that by having a global uh, tax on companies, no matter where they are, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win-win for every nation because it's, it levels the playing field. So again, even though um, you know they agree to this, which is significant, I should say, even though it's not act actionable, uh, we have to see how long it takes for each country and what, uh, you know, different details come out of each country's agreement. Right, totally. Um, did the president do anything to tackle the global supply chain issues that we've been dealing with? So he did issue one executive order to reduce some of the bottle next that we are seeing um, with regard to stockpiling. But really, the opportunity was more, again, just for world leaders to have an open dialogue and to make commitments yeah. about things that they can do better uh, to make this supply chain issue um, uh, not as serious as, as we are seeing around the world. For example, having more communication, having more measures for technology, having better conditions for workers. And so they did have a dialogue about it. But in terms of what the president can do, he's pretty limited because, again, you know, the White House has long said this is a private sector issue. So the White House is looking for different mm -hmm. ways they can contribute, but they really believe it's up to the private sector um, to deal with this. Yeah. Um, so we have been talking about the fact that both China and uh, Russia's leaders are not there. I know that um, Xi Jinping is kind of participating in the COP26 in a certain in a way, in, in that he has a statement that he's uh, that's going to be read. But did he appear virtually at the G20 summit? And I'm wondering if there was any impact of just not having uh, both Xi Jinping or uh, Putin there physically, if it really made that much of a difference. Yeah. Well, President Biden was very candid about this during his press conference, and he said he was disappointed that they did not participate because, of mm -hmm. course, um, you know, one of the major issues they're talking about at G20, as well as here, is climate change. And he really um, called them out and said that when we are talking mm -hmm. about reducing emissions around the world, it's, it's more about what China, Russia, Saudi Arabia are not doing. And so, you know, half of it is showing up and them not being there to have this face-to-face uh, -face dialogue, I think the president, you know, was very open about how that was less productive than it could have been. Mm -hmm. um, and even though he was overseas, he still had to face some tough questions about his domestic agenda. You know, what did he say about, you know, his, his the, the White House had made a point to let us know that there were phones on Air Force One and he could still participate in any sort of wrangling that had to take place while he was away. So yeah. is there anything sort of happening in terms of the infrastructure plan uh, while he's away? Uh, the president expressed a lot of optimism, but that's really nothing new. He said that he expected there would be a vote on both measures by the end of this week. Um, but his domestic agenda and his goals here in Scotland are tied together because that Build Back Better 
measure has more than half a trillion dollars to combat climate change. And even though he mm -hmm. is optimistic about a bill passing, the reality is he's entering this summit. He's trying to be the world leader um, for global climate change, and he's unable to even show a concrete approved plan for the U.S. So it is difficult for the president. I think it gives him, um, you know, less leverage as he tries to push other countries to make commitments. But um, again, he does believe that uh, they will ultimately have the votes asked explicitly today whether those two moderates, Senators uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, are on board. The White House did not say yes. They said that based on conversations that the president has had with them in the past several weeks, they are confident that they will be there. But uh, we haven't received a firm yes or any full-throated you know, note of support from either of those two key senators. Mm -hmm. And in regards to COP26, uh, you know, we've kind of are familiar with kind of the loftier sort of goals, the, the big picture goals, the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, I think, or is it 2050? It was 50% by 2030. You probably know the numbers better than me. Um, but sort of underneath that, what is the plan to get that done that is being proposed? Well, that's a great question because we're still waiting on the exact final version of the bill, right? But the president and other administration right. officials insist that there are other ways to do that. The problem is the main and the uh, strongest sort of tool that was in this bill was the Clean Energy Protection Program, and that is out. Um, and so a lot of analysts are really worried that without that and without a carbon tax, um, to take punitive measures on companies. It's really going to be difficult for the president to achieve those goals. Um, but still, you know, they are confident that they'll be able to get there, not only with various um, measures in Congress, but also executive actions. But, you know, I think it'll be tough, Anne-Marie, even though the president continues yeah. to express optimism. Yeah, yep. Uh, Weijia Jang, thank you so much.